All right, what is up, guys? And of course, as always, welcome back to the UBL Week Five versus Orlando Magic Carbs and Choice Specs. And as always, you know, before even considering listening to me, check out my opponent's channel, which can be linked down below. Choice Specs is one of those battlers that are really fun watching. He shifts a lot with his play style, and it's a team to kind of back that up, which only made this video that much tougher to record as I am still second guessing myself of what team to bring. I'll think I'll try to follow up on it as well as I can as we go into the battle which is going to be tomorrow. Um, <laughs> that said, my opponent's team is as follows. Pelipper, Clefable, Kamo, Togo tomorrow, um, Poltergeist, Udra, Meowstic, Arcanine, Lodocolo and Dreadnought. And over overall, like this is, like I said, a well synergized team. Um, the only thing I think is against it is that it doesn't have a great way of uh, taking away hazards besides Pelipper. So that's quite a tough role, but it doesn't necessarily are hazard weak either. Uh, besides, of course, potentially, you know, Arcanine and Pelipper being weak to uh, Stealth Rocks. But yeah, and I guess in in theory it is susceptible to Toxic Spikes and, you know, not a Poison type. But, but that's really it, like, I'm not gonna prep with Hazus in mind anyway, but that's something I kind of noticed as I was building. But at the same time, you know, Swift Swim make a lot of these Pokemon really, really dangerous anyway, so it's more about survival than it is about setting Hazus, as if it comes to stamina game, I might win, but offensively I don't. So I decided to, you know, get myself somewhere in the middle. So with that said, you're gonna showcase, of course, as always, the one I think are coming and the one I think do not will come, and then after following that with my team builds. So, as always, the crosses stands for Pokemon I don't think will come, blue rings stand for Pokemon that are defensive enough to make sense and are good overall Pokemon versus me, and red ring stands for they win if they get things right, <laughs> basically. So, yeah, I don't believe neither Gudra or Meowth is gonna make it. Um, with not too much filler. I mean, Gudra, while it is good in its own right, I do believe my Galarian there and kind of keeps that Pokemon away naturally. And Meowstic, I just don't know. The moveset isn't there. You can't set up screen, you can't set manual hazards or manual manual rain on screens, but that's about it. And now that the Pokemon I think are going to come, I'm going to start in line with Pokemon that are absolutely going to come, and that is going to be Pelipper, Clefable, and Arcanine. Uh, Pelipper, just for rain, makes sense. Um, Defogger, can carry knockoff, Hurricane is car alright versus me. Good. Water and Flying Stab is actually quite well rounded versus me. There really aren't one that you can switch in that solve those combination. Uh, Clefable, good stealth rocker, immune to, of course, hazards, and has recovery. Just a good defensive Pokemon. Um, I'm gonna actually have one Pokemon dedicated to beat that Pokemon. I've done that before with other defensive Pokemon. They're gonna work well, I think, this time too. But it all depends. Like, if if he's really speedy, Clefable, and a sweeper variant, then you know, my Stallbreaker set is not going to break it. So, I mean, it's a little Clefable, but it has a matchup, it comes in natural and just wins. And that's super frustrating. Uh, Arcanine, with Intimidate, probably his best response to uh, my Darmanitan, as it is a Pokemon I just don't do well versus. I, who, I do have switch-ins in, you know, Jellicent and Quillfish, but... Arcanine stands out as a Pokemon with many, many traits to be very effective versus me. Um, so yeah, I just really want to have that out there. And then it is because of Togedemaru and Poltergeist. I think both could make it, but I think one makes more sense than the other. Togedemaru is a Pokemon I think deals very well with Galavantula and can, in theory, if it is a choice guy set, outspeed my Darmanitan too. So. I don't switch in well at all to Token Morrow, and it has an offensive merit that I really can't do well versus. Um, I do believe Turtonator can keep that Pokemon away, but Turtonator is not considered for this matchup. But uh, Token Morrow, just with my builds in mind, is a Pokemon that actually shines. Same with Poltergeist. If that is a Shell Smash variant, it actually poses a lot of pressure to my team, which is why I have considered Scrafty for this matchup. I'm um, gonna go more to the de details of why, uh, but Poltergeist, really good overall, Shell Smash and its combination of Shadow Ball, Psychic and Giga Ring really do string my team to, you know, suffer quite a lot, so, good Pokemon, that's all I can say. And now for the Red Rings, the, the monsters that are dedicated, nomming on me, um, 
ideally I see Pelebrugle, Fable, Arcanine, and then Kamo, Lodicolo, and Dredno, but like I said, Togedmore and Poltergeist, all of them make sense, or do both make sense, but Kamo, Substitute Build Drum Set, or the clan, clan, you know, the other set, the special setup move with the you know, Clanner's Soul, or, or even Dragonlance, all of the, these sets are so good versus me, the Dragon and Fighter combination really does shine through as a it's a combination that really you know, beats everything besides Quillfish to an extent. Um, I I don't deal with Alcamo. Alcamo is, is phenomenal, <laughs> and uh, depending on his sets, it's gonna be no matter what annoying. And uh, Jellicent and Galvanchel, which are in this battle, are set up fodder for that Pokemon, no matter what I do. Uh, so I'm not looking forward to that. I, I really aren't. And then we have Dredno and Lord Colo. Um, Dredno is a Pokemon I believe absolutely makes it because a combination of its jaw move, liquidation, and head smash or stone edge, it's a perfect Pokemon. It pretty much wins for everything. It even can carry super power for Scrafty. So uh, if it is a Bandit or Life Orb or even some weird other sets, it's going to clean, clean me if I am unwary. Same thing with Lord Colo. Because my, I really don't have a one dedicated switch in for Lodicolo. The combination of Hydro Pump, Energy Ball, and Ice Beam is pretty much plenty versus me. And uh, I guess Quillfish, to extent, could have been a switch in, and so could Brown Sound kind of keep the Pokemon away. But both of them aren't considered for this matchup. And um, that's something I'm scary off as I'm basically trying to make up my mind to not be swept by individual Pokemon. So I'll duel leave myself open for Lodicolo, which very well could win this game if I mess up. I have two safety nets versus it, but quite frankly there's a sack play to pull them off and that is never pretty. But yeah, those are the Pokemon I think is gonna come and here are my six Pokemon I'm gonna bring to this game. Now yet again, I am avoiding to actually showcase my spread and I'm gonna of course talk which move pool I have, but I'm not gonna be specific with IVs as if I am in a situation where I can fend off against the same opponent in a possible playoff, I don't want to spoil myself. Um, so the team here is as follows. Galarian Darmanitan, Calvinchula, Jellicent, Scrafty, Rhyperior, and Whimsicott. Um, Galarian Darmanitan is a choice bandit variant. It is... It's a beast. No, quite frankly, the, the only like real merit with having Galarian Darmanitan here is that he has no Pokemon outspeed besides Togedomaru. <laughs> Arcanine and Calm... Or, or, yeah, Arcanine is speed tied, but besides that, Galarian Darmanitan is faster than everything else, and Choice Band, Icicle Crash does just about everything for everyone here. It's just about getting it freely, you know, and that to make sense when I play with, with it. But um, overall, Choice Bandit is, you know, it's a one kill with Fable, it's a one kill combo, it's a one kill on Pelipper, Lord of Color dies, Arcanine takes 50%, Poltergeist dies, Togemaru takes around 50%. Dread Noise is a switch in there, I guess, to an extent, but. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's real good. It's just, it just about getting it in. <laughs> it's really about that. And then we have a modest choice specs, Galventula. This Galventula is slower than a Jolly Arcanine, which I don't expect to fend off against. Thunder does around 50% to Clefable, which is great, but overall I just want to punish this team as he'll lack Pokemon that can take Thunderbolts, and, and, or in this case Thunders, besides Kamo. Uh, and Togemaru, who could be Lightning Rod, which is something I fear, but if Togemaru isn't there, Galvanchel is going to be a supreme Pokemon for this matchup, and um, I hope I don't see Togo tomorrow. Jellicent, Stallbreaker variant, which will mean <laughs> that we have, uh, I believe, Hex, will wisp Taunt, and Recover. I was considered Strength Sap, but if it brings Gudra, <laughs> it's actually immune to Strength Sap, so, and Sap Super kicks in, I get no recovery, so Recover made sense. Um, <clears throat> I have some speed investments here to outspeed both Pelipper and Clefable, more so Clefable, uh, but if it is an offensive Clefable, that won't be able to pull that off. But uh, Taunt should be plenty, and also it is a kind of an anti-response versus uh, combo to not get fully set up. The same thing with Poltergeist, as um, Taunt should be able to force it for only one shell smash, so it's not a lot, but it's something. Um, then we have Scrafty. Scrafty is based on a game I got to see with Vepsis versus this team, where he used an Assault versus Obstagoon, which were phenomenal for him of not being swept by Poltergeist. Now the moveset here is Low Sweep, so not Rain Punch, Low Sweep, together with Crunch, uh, no, Throat Chop, for Clanging Souls, Throat Chop, uh, Poison Jab, and Thunder Punch. 
uh, low sweep is there to make sure that combo can set up in our face and we of course will that speed down the same thing with pelipper pelipper will be slower on the switching as we haven't cracked that pokemon at all and i should be able to pull a thunder punch to kill with uh, just overall like switchings are tough and uh, poltergeist is a very non-threat but it is variant of scrafty um <clears throat> it was between scrafty and quillfish and uh, the only reason i decided to bring Scrafty over Quillfish was because Poltergeist is a non friend as long as Scrafty is active, uh, and that's a great thing to have. Rhyperia is a passive berry, and it's probably the one of the more out there Pokemon I brought to this matchup. Um, the reason I have it is because uh, it deals with Arcanine really well, as this, while well, Delicent is a switch in to an extent. Uh, Arcanine, or I mean Rhyperior, don't deal well with Arcanine and the combination of Togi Tomorrow just doesn't. Uh, our combination here of move pool, however, is Earthquake, Rock Blast, together with the likes of Stealth Rocks and Avalanche. Avalanche is there only for combo, as we should be able to at least take one close combo easily. And Avalanche should be plenty. Uh, but yeah, that, that's just a niche thing, really. Earthquake really does quite well here to get with Rock Blast. It really doesn't have a resistance to Rock Blast. Uh, <laughs> when you look at the team, uh, Togedomaru is probably his own response there, and what can Togedomaru do to Rhyperior? Not not a lot. Uh, and then lastly we have Whimsicott. Whimsicott is a mono-attacking Moonblast variant with Focus Sash. And we have Encore, Tailwind, and um, I had one more move, I'm trying to remember. I had this great idea <laughs> of the move pool. Uh, I'm just gonna scroll up and actually look at that. We had Encore. No, we had U turn, right? We're gonna Pivot. I'm pretty sure we were Pivot. So, Moonblast, U turn, and then Encore and Tailwind. Basically, they get a massive amount of momentum. And overall, like Tailwind you, works two ways. Either once a Tailwind is up, we are faster than Camo uh, for Hyperior. And uh, that's always nice, but more so. It means that the Swift Swim from uh, Pelipper won't be anything to scare out our Manhattan in the first place, as it will be speed or anything else on the field. Uh, second part is um, Encore. Encore is there to kind of nail his defensive responses and also disrupt them any way I can. Um, my best merit is to, if uh, Karma of a Dragon's variant or a Clannery's Soul, if I can get that on the switch in, I could be able to lock that Pokemon in and it won't get the free setup. Uh, it's something I fear with um, some of my Pokemon will be left in. He will take that, take absolutely take advantage of that. So I hope I can kind of get him. And you know, Sash is there too. If I get that play wrong, and I at least force him out and get another shot at it, hopefully. Um, <clears throat> but that's about it. Like that's the idea. My lead for this game is gonna be pretty much no matter what, Scrafty or Hyperior, depending on my feeling. Scrafty just overall doesn't die of anything here. So it's probably going to be my lead no matter what, as it does force Pokemon out naturally. But besides that, like, what am I scared of? I'm, I'm scared of getting swept by Swift Swim. <laughs> and I'm also scared of uh, Prepping versus Clefable wrong. And I'm really scared of Kamo. Kamo is just overall really phenomenal. If I if that Pokemon gets to run free versus me, I don't believe I can win. I really don't. Um, like, I can see sub Select and then Belladrum, and that would be the end of this battle. Uh, if Wimscar loses loses his sash, it's gonna just win, and that's something I really fear. Uh, but yeah, with that in mind, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, and uh, well, check it out tomorrow when we are going up to, at the battle itself. I'm actually battling him on Monday, so I'm recording this on Sunday, and uh, not gonna lie, kind of word, kind of word. Um, I need his win, but so does he, which is why this game will be. That much more interesting because of it. So with that said, as always, thank you for watching and have a great day. Take care, everyone. Bye.